am going to start every video like that today. Uh, the lack of sleep is getting to my skull. So. I'm glad something got to it. That is good. About the other thing. Also, just so y'all are aware, this is Brandon's chair. I thought we used... Motherfucker. <laughs> Me and I. Come on, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. With my friend, Ditchies. And we are going to... Who the fuck were you pointing? There's no one else over here. <laughs> we're going to resume discussions about very serious and important topics. I think he's seeing shit. In this mentally backlashed entire state that we're in, we're going to solve some problems Man. of the world today. How I... How... We are still functioning as human beings. I'm not. I'm not sure. It's got to be the Lord, man. I think we're seeing a miracle or the right here. Thereof. But uh, is it bad? That, all right. So I've been up. Uh, so last night, mm -hmm. I got three hours of sleep. Yeah. I've been up since seven a.m. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be leaving here in like two hours. Mm -hmm. I then plan on driving around and playing Pokemon. Oh, after you leave Which you? is why I'm currently charging my phone to make sure that I have a full battery before I go Pokemon oh, hunting. Oh my gosh. You guys can't criticize Pokemon Go too much. A lot of people... Like, I just never got into Pokemon when I was a little kid. I did. Just didn't, it's, didn't really It's hitting me. my generation. It really is. I'm 21. I'm 35. It's hitting my... How we're friends, I'm not fucking sure. But... I'm just immature. It's hitting. Basically. Okay. And it's hitting my generation. Everyone that... That is around my age. Like, anyone who's a millennial is playing this shit. Pretty much. So. Important topics for the evening. Important topics for the evening. We finished up homosexuality. We finished up. That was a four part on homosexuality. I hope y'all loved it. That was. And we, we didn't we go easy. We went into some deep shit. We did not go we easy. We didn't either. hold any punches. We, we, we thoroughly discussed that topic. We did. We exhausted it, honestly. And we so. both. Basically, there's a lot more research for science to do. Yeah. And if you believe in the Bible, it's pretty close, crystal clear what the stance needs to be. And if you don't, who gives a shit? All of the same can unfortunately be said for pedophilia to a certain extent. Uh, not we, really. We, we covered the whole. We covered the whole. You I'm know, still saying that in, 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 a, in, in a proper society, dictated by biblical morals or not. And understanding the psychological evaluations between children and adults, I can draw the line without the need of a supernatural moral basis. But that's only because of scientific advancements. Well, was it? If we were making this conversation 100 years ago, I probably wouldn't be able to draw that line. Because we hadn't advanced enough to research psychological stuff. Now we have. So... Well, we, I'll say we, we don't need to beat that particular dead we horse. We, we tackled that thing we, to pieces. We literally beat the horse. There's nothing left. I said the only proof. I the my, my standing ground is the Bible. As far as moral authority, that's yeah. it. You knock that out, I really have no moral standing at all. So okay, actually I say, well, that's a good uh, good segue into our next conversation. It which is. Which is my little area. Uh, really, have, homosexuality was kind of a basis that both of us were, were familiar with. This is a topic that I'm bringing in, mm -hmm. uh, and due to your faith, I assume you know quite a bit about, and that is the topic of free will. Recently, I actually took a philosophy, uh, I, I, sp I talked about in one of the, recent, in one of the previous videos, mm -hmm. that I'm taking a philosophy class, and recently we talked about the, the, the free will. I couldn't think of the word, I was going to force I said free will. Uh, we were talking about free will, and I went in there with one opinion, and left that classroom with a completely opposite opinion. Very interested to hear about that. Um, now, we're going to start off going off of the strictly physical basis, mm -hmm. and then move into uh, religious basis. Okay. So, the first thing is... Alright, we just finished eating. Mm. It's good. Um... You walked in, we were about to start this, and then you said, oh, I need to go to the restroom. Mm -hmm. So you went to the bathroom before we could start. Mm -hmm. Can you, and, and I remember because you sat there for a couple minutes, and you were thinking, do I want to just do the video, or should I go to the bathroom? Yeah. You said, I'll go to the bathroom. Uh, can you see yourself making the other decision? Can you see yourself making the decision of, now, 
wait to go to the bathroom. I'll, I'll record the video now. If everything was the exact same up until the millisecond that you decided to go, the exact same thought processes, the exact same weighing of options, but the split second that you decided, I'm going to go to the bathroom first, you instead decided, I'm going to stay here and do the video. Because everything right before that decision, every element is the exact same. According to science, if all the variables are the same, you'll get the same conclusion every single time. I don't think the human, I don't think the human mind can be boiled down to a formula. Well, no, but can you, it, it, well, in a way it can. If presented with the exact same backlog of information and the exact same knowledge and the, all, all every, if your mind is exactly the same as someone else's, according to scientific principle, because, like I said, we're going off purely physical basis here. Yeah. Um, so taking any kind of spirituality out of it. Taking yeah. Any kind yeah, yeah, of yeah. third party out of it. Correct. Um, your synapses... I'm my own man. Do right, whatever. For the second before you decided, your <clears> synapses <throat> would have fired in the exact same method, in the exact same pattern, in the exact same time frame. Under those circumstances, according to science, mm -hmm. in every given situation, you would have picked to go to the bathroom. At the same time, you've, you've picked a relatively easy topic for me to sway on because right. this is not a topic of huge importance. To it's me. not. If I had decided, suck it up, tough it out, I'll, just, you know, I'll make one recording before I go to the bathroom, I could have easily chosen that option. That would have been very easy to do. Just, it's like, you know what? I'll just suck it up for 30 minutes. I can live for 30 minutes without going to the bathroom. It wasn't a dire emergency or anything. Oh, it might have been a dire emergency. I thought you were going to pee your pants. But... Yep. Um, Nothing nearly that severe. <laughs> I just want to be probably but, um, prepared to not interrupt my own video at some point in the near future. Right. Um, it made logical sense. It, well, made sense to me. However, to just say, you know what, what's 30 minutes? Let's suck it up. Let's go through the video. Could I have made that decision? Well, I kind of want to say, you know, who are you or anybody else to tell me what decisions I am capable of making? Ah, well, that's the whole point of free will. I mean, like, is, are you the one making the decisions? If all of the previous subject material is the same, all variables are the exact same in both situations. You got like, all right, picture a graph, mm -hmm. and uh, the graph has a line going. I'm messing with your trap. The line there's the graph has a, a straight line going, uh. a straight line going up until the exact point of what you decide. You decide A, go to the bathroom, or B, do the video. Everything that's before that point is the same. You can't change it. That's the past. You can't change the past. If all of that is the exact same, like I said, like, like they do apply this uh, in science. Uh, the mind, as we look at it from a purely, if we look at it from a purely physical basis, everything that you think, every thought that you have, every decision you make, they can see a particular synapse fire. They can see a certain part of the brain wave, uh, the brain act up. They can see these decisions being made physically. And assuming that all the synapses fire up until that exact same point, in the exact same way, the next synapse should fire in the same way as well. Like, I'm, like you said, this isn't a topic of great importance, which is generally why I picked it. Because this isn't a topic that you would think, I'm not allowed to choose to stay here and make the video instead. You know, it's not, it's not something that would normally come to mind. Because it's kind of just second nature. And, you know, you assume that... Yeah, of course I could stay here with you. That's the general assumption that most people make. That's the assumption that I was making when I started the class. Um, it, you know, like, it really appears as though we have free will. Uh, but now going into the spiritual part of it, because this is exactly what he did. We were all like, oh, no. And then he brought this in, and we were just like, fuck. Just <laughs> to take the pure spiritual part of it, God, a thousand years ago, million thousand years ago, before anything existed. That's a big number. He knew that in that second, you decided to go to the bathroom. Okay. He knew that would happen. A thousand years ago. Okay. Now, a thousand years ago, if he knew that, you can't change that. That's the past. Right? Like I said, you can't change the past. So, a thousand years ago, he knew that you would go to the bathroom. Could you have done anything else? 
Because Bible that would have been changing something from a thousand years ago, or before that even. Well, biblically, I can answer that one pretty set up, pretty steadily. In Romans chapter eight, the Bible says in this order: whom those whom he foreknew, he predestined to be heirs of righteousness. That in and of itself speaks of a foreknowledge of what would happen, and then God himself acting upon that foreknowledge. So the question it can very easily and pointedly be made at that point, you know, why did he, why didn't he, since he's all powerful, why didn't he predestine it and thus foreknow? Why did foreknow come first? And when you look at the, this, it's an entire list of things. And it ends in the eventual glorification of the saint, you know, heaven, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. It's a very purposeful and, and chronological in this one instance list. I don't see why the first two terms, foreknowledge and predestination, should be considered synonymous or repetition. They seem very purposeful and filled with intent when I read them, especially given the context of the rest of those verses that are conjoined to those two words. Right. I think it would be very easy to say, from a biblical standpoint, that based on his foreknowledge, what he foreknew, then he said, okay, we're going to put this in place. That is a very blatant acknowledgement of our choice. And then there are many other voices where, or choices in the Bible where God himself says, choose this day, life or death, whom you will serve. Since my God is a God of truth and not of lies, he's not going to tell me to do something I can't do. He's not going to put a false proposition to his people. I'm not saying that he's lying to you. I'm just saying that it's possible that perhaps you are under an illusion for example, well, could, for example, the thing where you said, now this day, choose whom you will serve. I need to remember this point. I'm going to try to remember this point while you talk. Um, you know, choose whom you will serve. Before he even said that, he knew what your answer was going to be. I don't, don't know what the answer was, but he, because I assume that's part of the Bible. Uh, but he knew what that, that person's answer was going to be. Meaning that if he knew that previously, could that person have chosen the other answer? Because if he chose the other answer, then that would mean what God knew previously was wrong. If, if God knew, choose A, if God told this person, choose A or B, and God knew before he asked that, he's going to choose A. Okay. Could that person choose B? And my answer to that would be a resounding and loud yes. Um, you mentioned earlier how, from a purely physical standpoint, there's not much that we can really grasp outside of a self-conscious statement, I know that I am. I'm not sure if that was captured on video. What? Um, the only, no, that was when we were watching on a comedian earlier, and he said the only thing that we can confidently state... Yes, is, is from, I know, therefore I am. And that was Jean-Jacques Rousseau? No, that was Descartes. I, don't, I totally messed that up. Um, I think it was Descartes. Either way, from a very... from. A human perspective, we are incredibly limited, we're incredibly narrow, what we can see, what we can experience, is the tiniest of tiny specks. Um, and as an agnostic, you have to acknowledge the fact that you don't know. Oh, yeah. You're in the, you, the reason you've chosen that as your religious view is because you mentally assert a lack of knowledge and a lack of commitment. You just do. I won't disagree with that. <laughs> but you see... I think, a, I think we're too stupid to figure out this out. As a Christian, I am claiming to have a knowledge that supersedes my own human understanding. Now, could I be wrong? I could be. And that changes the entire ball, ball of wax at that point. But, if I'm correct, then that Bible is the Word of God. I'm, uh, it's re I, I put it right back where I left it last time, so I'm pointing at my hey, Bible here. It did. It's literally right behind my Bible. Right here. If a being that can perceive all of reality has told me how this stuff works, then I have a much clearer picture than what I could say just in and of myself, my own experience, my own sensory perception. And I'll throw the um, question right back at you. Who are you to say that as a human, or who is any human to say as a human, you know, my knowledge or our collective knowledge has come to a point where I can definitely tell you and assert and prove scientifically that you are not your own person. You are not making these choices. I'm not saying that at all. 
And I mean, like I said, you know, like I'm getting most of this from the subject of philosophy. But I don't know of any philosophers that are saying that. Now, granted, there are some that are rather stingent on their stances. Um, for example, we talked previously about the one that said, if you believe in anything that isn't physical, you have a mental problem. Yep. Remember her. Yeah. She, she, she so was I very... Forget, forget the name, but I remember She was very blatant. Sentence. I forgot the name at this point. She was very blatant in saying that if you believe in God or anything like that, you are no better than a child that believes in Santa Claus. Yeah, I've heard I've heard of some atheists taking that position before. Yeah. Um, so there are some like that. I tend to think those people are kind of assholes. Um, <laughs> uh, but... Talk about presumptuous. For the most part... You know, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not claiming that you don't have free will. I'm just saying, we might not. Um, now, so for, beca because of a scientific formula from that right. basis, and this can kind of go back to our previous conversation on homosexuality. Woo! Revisiting. All right. Um, you said that uh, due to a uh, combination of things you have at birth. You know, your knowledge of right and wrong, and if you have any kind of mental disabilities, whatever. Things combined at birth, combined with the environment, can change how you live. Okay, it can affect the rest of your life. Those aren't things people get to decide. You know, the, what they're born with and the environment they're born into, they, those aren't chosen. Those are outside of your control. But those yeah. could decide, those could create decisions down the path of your life. Where you couldn't control that you picked A instead of B because of the way you were brought up, the environment you were in, and your mindset given to you at birth. You couldn't control whether you were picking one answer or the other. Um, for example... That's assuming that, a lot of things are going to stay in place. Actually, what's the basis of that assumption that things have to go a certain way? What do you mean? Well, in other words, you're... The, the, it sounds like the, the foundation of this thought process is, you know, this happened, this happened, this happened, this happened, therefore this end result would happen each and every time. How can you even say that well, this, 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 and this would have happened? Well, let me Are give you an, in a position to do that? Well, let me give an example, and then uh, I'm going to bring up a criminal law case. You know, that's my forte. Woohoo! Um, so, you were born in a Christian family. No. You weren't? No. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Fuck no. Ah. I thought you were. No. Well, how, how did you gain Christianity then? Oh, I remember you got it like when you were like, what, 13? Very good. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, the environment that you grew up in, which led you to Christianity and leading to that, and then at 13, I'd say you're still developing. I'd probably agree with that. Yeah. Um, so through, all, through your entirety of development... With the environment that you had and, uh, you know, you presumably had quite the moral compass when you were born, naturally. Um, that combined with your following of Christ would lead you to a point today where, uh, at, like I said, I'm using this as an example. Um, your your end-all, be-all, one-topic voting thing is whether someone sides with abortion rights or not. Yep. Open up this whole little series with that particular state. Yes. So, with that in particular in mind, could you vote for a candidate who was blatantly pro-choice? Could I? I, st I could. Would I want to? No. Now, I don't keep thinking about that. Why are you thinking about that? There was a case that came up in 1930 where right two um, college students, very prestigious college, I forgot what college they were going to uh, in particular, but it was a very prestigious college. They were very smart and straight A's. Mm -hmm. um, and they were so smart, in fact, that they decided we could pull off the perfect murder. So they murdered someone, uh, cut up their body, threw, in, uh, threw, threw it in acid, and then took whatever remained after it went through the acidic process into the ocean. That is thorough. They were caught. Apparently. We know the case. Their lawyer, who had been working in criminal law for 20 plus years, provided this argument 
to the jury, stating that uh, the environment that the group that the boys grew up in, which in which they were handed everything, and their success throughout school led them to believe they were smarter than they actually were. They have been convicted of the crime. They have been okay. found guilty of first degree murder, both of them. At this point, they were being sentenced. Yeah. And the entire public, as well as the jury, was saying death penalty. Yeah. Um, and the, and the lawyer argued that because of the uh, the world that they grew up, the environment that they grew up in, they could not stop themselves from thinking that they could commit the perfect murder. Yes, they did. That was apparently good enough to get the jury to decide on life in prison rather than on the death penalty. The public was, uh, they were livid, obviously. Can I interject real quick? Yeah. She used a word other than decide. What do you mean? You said the jury decided the fate of those boys based on the attorney's words. For the sake of your argument, use a word other than decide. <laughs> well, no, that's the easiest way to explain it. Um, they determined that they were more deserving of the life sentence rather than the death penalty. Uh, now, there is a... You chose your words better that time. Yeah. Now, there, 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 <laughs> there is an entire school of thought based on this um, called hard determinism. Hard determinism. Um, That's the word for it. Fatalism without the religious attire. Determinism. Right. Yeah, determinism. Um, I'm not gonna lie, some determinists are fucking dicks too. Um, I, I have come to the conclusion that every branch of philosophy has at least a couple of assholes in it. I haven't discovered any people group ever where there weren't a few bad eggs. That's true. Like, ever, ever, ever. Every group has its fucked up ones. Yeah, particularly Christians. Won't deny it. Uh, Westboro Baptist I was Church. just about to say that. <laughs> Fucking dicks. I was just about to say that. Um. So. That, that was enough. Yeah. To get these boys life in prison. Now. Um, it was kind of interesting because I had this conversation with my dad. Mm -hmm. And I brought up all this. And uh, he was saying. Uh, and and, and, and he, he was saying in the, like, it's still your brain deciding. You're still getting to decide what it is. Which I assume you're kind of taking the same stance. Like, it's still your brain choosing what synapses to fire. I'm not... It sounds incredibly presumptuous to me to simply assume that because the human brain has been traced, like, el electrically. That's, the synapses fire based on electricity, if I remember correctly. Yes. And so we can watch that circuit move. We can... You know, certain patterns will always trigger the exact same series of relays in your synapses. But it's impossible for me with that many variables just within the, own, within the human body itself to say that we've gotten that down to a science and not just an art and that this is something that can be definitely predicted. It sounds way too theoretical for me to buy into. Well, I, I mean, feel like a lot of assumptions are being made there to say... Well, a lot of yep, assumptions are being made in a lot of things. A lot of assumptions are being made saying that God's real. Granted, and there are and there are proofs offered for that belief. So what, are they? I present I presented at least one in the form of archaeology or bleh, archaeology and paleontology as a as a as a source to say that the Bible is a reliable historical book. That was one proof that I presented um, one or two videos ago. And the proof you essentially presented was you know because we can watch the brain work. We can literally, at this point in our science, watch it work and yeah. watch it move your body. But to then add to that, not only can we trace your individual movements and your individual motions, but we can trace, and we can not only trace, you know, the chemical balances and imbalances in your body, but we can, in addition to all that, say, because of your environment, because of how you were raised, Therefore, your synapses will definitely do this, and because the past is, is, it is set and can't be changed, therefore, moving forward, everything is already put in a predetermined motion. Right. I mean, that what, 
Well, let me ask you this. What causes your synapse to fire? Taking the electricity thing out of it. What would have caused either the synapse to chose A or the synapse to chose B? What caused one of those to fire? I assume the very fact that I have life enables me to... Enables me to move, breathe, make choices. Other things are alive, they don't have brains. Hmm? Other things are alive, they don't have brains. Now that is interesting. I did not honestly know that. Are you referring to single celled organisms? Well, I mean. Because even there, even with them, there's a nucleus that essentially tells that cell what to do. Well, I mean, I'm referring to like the, an actual brain. Like, what does a jellyfish have? Goop. That's what it is. Yeah, I honestly. Goop and tentacles. It's basically just swimming Japan. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so. Oh my god. This is the best video. The best. This is the best. <laughs> I don't know how jellyfish operate. I, I, I don't know. I don't have know. a fucking clue. That is a question. That reminds me, though. That was a question I had many, many, many years ago. Back when I was in school. I was like, how do jellyfish fucking work? What are those things up to? Same. Now that I think about it, we are getting off topic. Alright, well... But anyway, okay, so 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 the fact that we you do have, have brains, the fact that we have a brain, a human brain at that. Any everyone would agree that humans, okay, some wouldn't agree that humans have the highest level of communication, and a moral code and a choice. We're unique in that aspect. So nothing and, else that I, I hear has. And this. so then, what gave us that brain and that life and that moral code? And and therein, religion steps in and says God. Okay. And atheism at this point. So if God would gave you every a, if God gave you every single aspect that would lead up to you making the decision. If God gave you every synapse to fire, if he gave you every experience you've ever had, if he gave you your human life that makes you special, what's to say that he didn't also if he if he gave you all of that, if he put all of that in motion. It doesn't seem unreasonable to me that he would also put in motion which decision you make. Now, and you used the term earlier, predestination. Yes. Predestination. When I heard you say predestination, I was like, oh, okay, so he's going to say that we aren't free to do everything. And then you turn it around and you said that we were. Because normally predestination is an argument brought up by Christians who think that we don't have complete and total free will. For example, the Methodist religion generally believes in predestination in that God chose who was going he to heaven and who was going to hell. Yeah. Um, so normally when I hear predestination brought up, it's for people saying that there isn't free will. The theological term for that, le that's actually a different level of predestination called hyper or double Calvinism. Or it's called, it's hyper Calvinism or double predestination. Not only in that double predestination. These are these are really technical, fancy theological terms. Normal predestination says God chose beforehand His elect, the people who would go to heaven. Double predestination further states, and I can see where it, the, the logical extension is really very obvious here. If God chose those who go to heaven, He chose double, to go to hell. He equally chose those who were going to go to hell. Um, Which I always thought that was kind of an odd thing to believe. And that's where the double predestination thing kicks in. <clears throat> and the Bible makes very, very clear that the Lord does not delight in the destruction of the sinner. He delights in the repentance of the transgressor. Romans 1 makes it clear that all of creation just shouts that someone is behind this. It says his very nature and Godhead is seen through his creation. And then there's the verse in 1 Timothy where he desires all to come to repentance and that none should be lost. All of these things indicate a desire for mankind and a purpose in the Father's heart to make sure that every single human being has the chance to say yes to him. God wants people to go to heaven. He loves them. He died for them. Which I never understood that. that that's one thing. Okay, motherfucker. This is some shit that I literally learned my entire life, and my entire life was like, that's fucking stupid. And now we're at the 30-minute moment, so we'll get into the fucking stupid stuff oh, next it. episode. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you disliked it, hit that dislike button.
you really like to share with a friend, subscribe and join the freaks. I love you. God bless.